shed and uh, this week we're looking at the Brian Kirby method of magnetic uncoupling for tension lock couplers. Um, I've been fiddling uh, with uh, Brian's system for some time now and uh, trying to uh, work out how to best set it up for my layout and uh, I've done some just running trains videos uh, where there's a fair bit of shunting going on and um, I've used the method where I stop the camera, uncouple the uh, wagon and then start the camera again to uh, continue on with the film. And uh, I've had questions from people saying uh, what sort of uncoupling method do you use once they've seen the film? And uh, really it's, it's just the magic of uh, television folks or the magic of Gourmet Vision here uh, in the Gourmet Vision studios. So I thought, uh, you know, each time I've done a film it's prompted some response in some way about the uncoupling so I thought it's about time I, I got this thing bedded in and sorted out and basically it's all about establishing some sort of uh, rules uh, measurements and all that sort of thing standards uh, that you can flow right through your railway and uh, so we'll have a look at what I've done and uh, you may get a better idea of how I've set it up so we'll, we'll have a look at that now now my original take on the Brian Kirby uh, method was, uh, and this is using staples folks, I suppose I should have explained that for uh, you people who don't know about the Brian Kirby method, but what it is, is uh, you get staples and you attach them to the uh, drop down uh, part of the uh, coupler on tension lock couplings and then you place a magnet in the track and the magnet attracts the staple and lifts up the uncoupling hook and you have uncoupling. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. And uh, if you want to see more about it, you, if you Google uh, magnetic uncoupling and anything to do with Brian Kirby, uh, there should be some videos on, on the net that will show you what he's done. He does it just slightly different to the way I do it, but this is, he's the man who invented it. So I'm, I'm pinching his idea. And uh, so uh, originally I started um, soldering staple to the back of the drop down uh, hook on the uh, on the coupling hook and uh, that means you've got to remove the the hook uh, from the coupling uh, scrape the back of it uh, clean up the staple and solder it on a nice flat surface solder the two parts together bit of a pain really and I thought well there's got to be a, way, a better way and I know some other people super glue the staples to the uh, the hooks so I thought, well, that's, that's the way to go. But how do I achieve a consistent result? And uh, so that's when I started thinking about it. And I thought, well, what I need for a start is a height gauge. Uh, and uh, my height gauge is simply a piece of uh, uh, 10 mil by 3 mil aluminium flat bar. And uh, what I've done is, is drilled into it and I've inserted a neodymium magnet, exactly the same as the magnets that I'm using for the uncoupling of and it's flush with the top of the uh, aluminium or almost flush and what I do is then take this piece of test track that I've uh, set up it's just a piece of flex track pinned to a bit of wood and that will hold one sixty foot coach and uh, I then place my height gauge on the track there and I've got to bear in mind this is all sitting on a bench when I do it. So the height gauge goes in the track there. And it, there's room for it to slide about a bit. And that's good if you need some adjustment. And then I simply place the staple on the magnet. So I should show you that. Hang on a sec. I'll get that. Right. I simply place the staple on the magnet. And you can see I've bent one leg of the staple back at 45 degrees. 
put that on the uh, magnet and it's lined up so that it's fairly uh, it's running parallel with the rails and then I bring a wagon, I'll show you all this in a moment but I bring a wagon over the top, I put some super glue on there, bring a wagon over the top and just hold the staple up against the uh, the uh, coupling hook and allow it to, to dry there and that's it, bingo and when you take it off they're all at the same height and uh, they're sitting horizontal to the, the base of the track um, so you're, on, you're off to a good start if you can get that set up alright let's get into a bit more detail okay a couple of things first folks um, I'm using these uh, small staples now that may help you with a description uh, Rexel number 10s uh, and there's a thousand of them in there for a couple of bucks so uh, a little box is going to last you a long time uh, so these, these are very small so that's the sort of staple I'm using and to prepare the staple I peel it away off its um, magazine and I scrape the back edge here with a blade uh, just to clean it up because these things have some sort of glue on them to hold them together and uh, secondly I'm only using the small Backman tension lock couplings for a couple of reasons firstly they're small and secondly um, they are some of them seem to be made from brass and this particular one seems to be some sort of alloy uh, but they're not magnetic so that's the the critical element uh, with this method is that the coupling hook has to be non-magnetic otherwise it's going to be drawn down towards the magnet in the track and completely defeat the purpose of the whole exercise so yeah they I suppose you could use plastic couplings uh, using a similar method but uh, yeah so that's where we are now what I'll do now is just get some super glue and I'll put a drop on the top of the staple here fairly generous and just let it run down and now I wheel the wagon up beside the staple and then I just actually push the coupling hook against the staple and just hold it there so it's actually stuck to the back of this um, hook which you can't see at the moment but I need to be able to see it otherwise this is just not going to work and um, yeah just give it a, a little while there to set before you attempt to pull it away and uh, what we'll do is we'll check it once we've, uh, we're happy with it and I'll put some extra super glue on as well so we'll just let that go off for a little bit longer right well, it should be ready now folks so I'll just get something to um, stop the uh, piece of aluminium sliding forward and what I'll do is I'll slide the wagon forward and free of the magnet and there we have it See, it's picking up the magnet and uh, I'll just turn this around and on the other end of this uh, little test track I've got a magnet set down in between the sleepers so we can uh, we can test that it works now looking at that on the camera looks like it's not sitting quite horizontal but that's all right it'll probably still work you can do fine adjustments uh, once you uh, test it out on your track um, bend it up for less attraction bend it down for more attraction to the magnet bearing in mind you don't want to bend down too far because you need to be able to clear rails and things like that so um, I'll just move it up to the other end of the track and uh, we'll, we'll check and make sure that it works okay you can see my magnet in the middle of the track there so we'll just put that down now I'll put the wagon on and with any luck we'll see it work there you go and you can see from this side I've turned it around the other way you can see how it's stuck to the back of the uh, the hook there and that's a fairly secure um, bit of gluing there so I'm quite happy with that and I mean if it peels off we just whack another one on it's not as though they cost an arm and a leg 
So that's it folks, that's how we achieve it. And uh, what I'll do with this wagon is um, I'll just put another drop of super glue over the, over the whole lot there. And uh, when it's all dried off, I give it a coat of some um, uh, carbon black acrylic paint, which dries very flat, and these things practically disappear. Right, folks, I'll do the other one, the other end of this wagon. And uh, once we've got that set up, I'll go and try it on uh, my railway, which is the, uh, the ultimate test. There we go. Okay, it should be set now. Just pull it away. And we'll do a little test. Right, here we go. Yes, that's working. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I'll just put a couple more drops of super glue on these couplings and then we'll go into the uh, railway room. Okay, folks, uh, I've come up with a formula that sits uh, the magnets that I've got and staples, etc., and my railway. And uh, the formula for me is um, pushing the magnets down in between the sleepers um, so that they're flush with the top of the sleeper or as close as I can get it. And I've got them down the middle and I've got six magnets. Now what happens is when the wagons uh, come along, um, it's probably the, the last two magnets at either end that are doing the work and the two in the middle are not having any effect. But having six gives you a bit of movement in your area that's actually working. So if you reduce the number of magnets, you reduce the uncoupling area, if you like. So I've put the, the six in to give me a bigger uncoupling area. Uh, I suppose with DCC control and very fine control of your locomotives, you could get away with less magnets. But anyway, this is what suits my railway, so uh, that's what I do. I've got some more set up over here uh, in my goods yard area and uh, again six magnets. Originally when I started mucking around with this I found I had better success with the three magnets offset, just off center in each direction uh, but it depends on the height of the the staple from the track and the strength of the magnets and all that sort of thing. Uh, I would say now my staples are sitting lower on the coupling hook and uh, therefore um, they're much more attracted to the magnets and I can put the magnets simply down the middle and it works uh, effectively. So um, the less attraction there is, uh, the more need there is to offset uh, the two sets of three magnets, if that makes sense. Anyway, we'll try some uh, uncoupling and uh, we'll see how we go. Now folks, I'm going to back a train over this area and you, you'll probably see the couplings raising up as uh, they go over the magnets because the wagons are under compression and there's no pressure on the couplings uh, except for the brake van, I haven't done that one yet so you won't see any action on that one but just um, watch the couplings as they hit the magnets that's the new wagon I just did Whoops bit over enthusiastic there Gormo. Now we'll uncouple from this one and you can see I haven't painted the staples yet so they, they stand out a little bit but um, um, just trying to concentrate here folks I'm watching it through the camera which is more difficult there we go so that worked um, I've also taken the coupling hooks off my locos because I don't feel they're necessary uh, the, the bar is still there and uh, it just simplifies the whole process so that's another thing I've done so now we're coupled on that one so we'll just pull forward and uh, we'll uncouple this grey van from the rest of the train so what we need to do now is back up just until there's no pressure on the couplings
seem to have missed it there for some reason. We'll try that again. Right, the super glue had uh, actually stuck on part of the coupling there, so we'll try that again. Should have realised that. There we go. That's better. Now we'll uncouple. Yeah, you've got to wait till this stuff goes off, folks, before I've jumped in a bit early with this one. So some super glue has sort of made contact with the uh, the coupling bar, and uh, yeah, when it coupled up to the next wagon, they sort of locked themselves together. It's only very minor, but uh, yeah, there I go talking again and banging carriages into each other. Okay, we'll try another wagon. And there we go. Try another one. That one was pretty easy. There we go. Of course, with this system, you're at the mercy of the uh, placement of the magnets. It's not as uh, as flexible as the KD system is. But there you go. You get what you pays for. We'll try another one. There we go. Right. Well, there you go, folks. Uh, it's um, pretty much about standardisation, I suppose, to get a. Uh, success out of this sort of thing um, you know I, the, the fundamental thing really is to standardize your couplings first um, I've got all sorts of different size tension locks on some of my rolling stock you know some of it's quite old and really you know they hook up but they're they're not really compatible for all all processes that you might want to use especially when you're shunting so a little a little uh, Backman uh, modern coupling is not going to go too well with an old-fashioned uh, big broad lemur. Um, it will work and it works uh, okay for pulling trains around but when it comes to shunting you might have a bit of a problem so really your best option is to standardize your couplings first then everything is the same you know whether you use the, the staple line coupling system or not at least you standardize the, the coupling system and whatever you want to use will work better uh, yeah, so um, yeah, the, the key to it for the staples, I think, is standardisation, is uh, getting them at all the same height, and you've got to have them above rail height. So, um, you know, the rail is your starting point, but you've got to be able to clear the rail, especially when you're going over points. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's a matter of uh, picking up some magnets, and there's stacks of them available on the internet and uh, and also from local suppliers and all that sort of thing and they're not very expensive and you get a lot in a bag so it's um, visually it's it's quite a good system for tension locks because you don't have those big um, uncoupling ramps sticking up everywhere uh, and you know you don't have to uh, try and work out some sort of electromagnet system or wire and tube to pop up a ramp or anything like that they just sit there once they're installed forget them and uh, the, the system is quite simple and uh, visually on the wagons uh, once you paint the uh, the staple black practically disappears you're flat out seeing them so I, I think it's pretty good actually it, it's um, it's it's better than the original tension lock system but nowhere near as good as KD's so it's that in between sort of system if you like okay well that's about all I can tell you for now so uh, I'll uh, talk to you again next week, so I'll see you then. Cheers. Gourmet.